All right, so today we're talking about formative assessments, technology, and data-driven instruction. Um, so the way that I utilize this strategy and the way I found it works best in the classroom is that the formative assessment is given once a concept, which works out to about once a week. I'll spend one week on an overarching concept. Um, it, this provides focused data based on just that one concept, and the results then are used almost immediately to drive instruction in the classroom. So let's break it down. Formative assessments. So the type of formative assessment I use for this purpose, for concept-based immediate data, um, is a five multiple choice question like quiz. Um, it, when I do five, it's really simple that way. I do one question on background knowledge. Uh, this is knowledge that they should already come in with, either from the previous grade level, if it's some sort of concept that they see in every year that builds and builds, or from, <clears throat> and this is for uh, do more like social studies and science, Maybe uh, it's a concept that they haven't seen since fourth grade or since third grade or since fifth grade. So I'll go back to that K-5 benchmark or that previous year's benchmark or standard and look at what is the knowledge they should already be coming in with and ask a question on that level. Then I'll ask three medium right on concept uh, questions. These are, you know, right at your standard. What is the standard or concept you're asking them about? And these are questions right on par with that. And then one really hard slash extension, pushing it beyond to the next level of that standard or benchmark. Um, this is when I tap into those high school benchmarks or those next grade level benchmarks or even two grade levels up version of it and um, really, really delve into the kids' knowledge. If they can get this question right, they've probably got all the other questions right as well. This is not graded. Um, you can almost refer to it as like a pretest, but it's not a pretest in the sense that it's long and it goes over the whole unit or anything. It's really short. It's those five questions. It's only one concept. It's focused, focused data. If you drive too much data, you're not, you're not, the analysis is going to take a little bit longer, um, but it's not graded and the kids know that it's not graded, but they also know that it's utilized and it's utilized immediately. They can see it. So they do actually try their hardest on this. So I've given this multiple choice test, um, this really quick quiz, this five questions, um, and then I use a piece of technology to grade it, and this provides instant feedback, and that's the key to using the technology to grade it. So there's two kind of diff like brain children of this. Um, there's a one device and there's a many devices. I go back and forth between the two of them using whichever kind of fits my needs for what classroom I'm in right then. Uh, when I was in the classroom, I was lucky enough to have one-to-one -one iPads in my room, so I really liked using a one-to-one -one aspect with Edmodo, but I know not everyone's that lucky. Um, so I've also really dug into Zipgrade. I think it's an awesome way too, but I'm gonna talk about the two differences. So a one device version is when the teacher is the one with the device. No one else needs a device, so if your kids don't have all BYOD, that's okay. Um, you just, you're the only one that needs the device. Um, my favorite for one is Zipgrade. I've also heard of GradeCam. And those both utilize the device's camera. And I know Zipgrade, I haven't, I don't know too much about GradeCam, but I know Zipgrade is good on Android and iPhone or Apple products. Um, and it just needs a device with a camera. And you literally hold your camera over a Scantron that it lets you print out yourself. And you can even laminate them and use dry erase markers to save paper. Um, <clears throat> but you hold the camera over it, it scans the results, it gives you an instant feedback with a score, everything like that. Plickers is kind of in the same realm, it uses the device's camera, but in this version, the students hold up individual QR codes, and depending on which direction is up will be which letter, A, B, C, or D, because it's square, it has four sides, and each student's QR code looks different. So there's no cheating or anything, it's not like I'm gonna hold up a card with the letter A and everyone else is gonna hold it up because I held one up. Um, it's you know really customized, really personalized for that student. Their Plicker card looks different than everybody else's Plicker card. Um, and then there's the many devices ones. I love Edmodo. Um, you can use Angel too. I think Edmodo is a little bit more user friendly than Angel and the reports that Edmodo gives are beautiful and amazing. Um, another program I use in the classroom was Socrative. Some people call it Socrative. Uh, this is, there's an app version and there's also web-based so it does work on any device but um, they work best with one-to-one. -one. You can use a Google form. Uh, Poll Everywhere is another website version that I really like. And clickers, uh, the Media Center has sets of clickers. They are all gone this year. Uh, but if you have a set and you're not sure how to use them, please let me know and I will help you out with that. 
Um, and all of these can also, except for clickers, you want one-to-one -one with clickers. But the rest of these, you know, require a device. You can also have students rotate through. Like during the course of the day today, I need you to take notes on this article and go back to the computers at some point or another, or even assign groups back through there to take a pretest. It's a five question pretest. At most, if they're taking three minutes a question, that's 15 minutes. Um, and that's at most, and these are short specific questions. Shouldn't take 15 minutes. All right, so you've asked the questions, you've used technology to grade it, you have this info, it's instant. What do I do from there? So from there, this is where you're coming into your data-driven instruction. Um, or as we used to call it all the time a few years ago, and I know the word will come back around in the cycle of education, um, this is really true differentiation in action in your room that you can show is based on recent data on a conceptual level. Um, so my recommendation for this, because it might seem overwhelming at the beginning, is to start simple. You'll know when you're planning that you'll have two groups of students who you're going to need to do something with after you give out the content. You'll have a high group. This is your group that tested, you know, more than, you know, three or more questions correct out of that five. They had that background knowledge. They were mildly familiar with the concept um, or they were very familiar with the concept. For them, all you would need to do is give them some on-grade level practice activities and then some enrichment. Connect it to the next levels of the standard, connect it to prior knowledge, connect it to new knowledge, have some, make some prediction. Um, and then you'll also have the other half of your class, that low group. These are the group, these are the students that got two or less of those questions correct. Um, you'll start with them. This is where you'll be doing some small group instruction, working on foundational skills, building that background knowledge, and then you'll work with them on the on-grade level practice activities. By then, it's kind of, you know, gradual release-ish. By then, you can hop over to the high group and double check that they're on point. <clears throat> That's starting simple. You can move into like a three group segment as well. And there's, you know, there's all sorts of different ways to break it down. But getting it to three, you'll have your high kids. These are the ones who have four to five questions right on that multiple choice assessment. Um, they've got the concept already. They don't need additional practice with it. Take them straight to enrichment. Take them straight to pushing further. Worst comes to worst, they find out they can't do it. They step back and do some on grade level practice to get them there. Um, then you have your average kids. These are the ones who got about three questions right. And you know, you know your kids, you know which ones were maybe a guess question that they got right. You might wanna push them back or challenge them forward. Um, but in this group, you'll start with the on grade level practice activities and then push them towards a bit of the enrichment. Will they spend as much time in the enrichment as the high group? Absolutely not, but they'll try and they'll get there. Um, and then you'll have your low group of kids. And these are the kids that, you know, if they got one or two of those questions correct, there's not very much background knowledge. Um, especially if they miss that first question, they almost always go here. Uh, and this is where you're gonna have your small group instruction. This is where you're going to be teaching your foundational skills, building that background knowledge again, and then getting them up to try those on grade level practice activities. When you've done this, now this is not what you spend the whole week doing. This is you've quizzed them, you've given them the information via some sort of a lecture or an article or a video or a combination, maybe they took some Cornell notes, however you gave them the information, this is their quick practice with it. Um, this whole process is about a day, maybe two days in a classroom. Um, it really can be that quick. And from there, now everyone has the information. You've been to all the groups. You know that they all get it. Um, either they prove to you that they got it, they're in this higher group, they prove to you that they got it immediately, or you were with them building up their skills, you know, right where they are now, and you're ready to move the whole class on. This is when you can move the whole class on into those Kagan structures that really require everyone having knowledge and being able to participate. Um, this is when you can do, uh, like in a science classroom, you can do those lab activities. This is when you can really move on to those more advanced in-depth um, activities with whatever concept or benchmark you are covering. And again, if you do this process, like I said, once a concept in science, you hit a concept about once a week, uh, then you really build that time later in the week to bring your students up if we're talking on our learning goal scale. You've gotten them all to that three, now we're pushing the whole class to that four. Instead of just those few students getting to the four because we walked the whole class through the foundation to the on grade level and then maybe time for the enrichment. This way, everyone got to here and now we're pushing them a little bit further.